everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Welcome, fabricators. Today, we are covering a preview of Microsoft Fabcon Vienna. I helped the Fabric SQL database team by building a precon module on this precon, sentiment analysis and translatical task flows. You get a preview of what everybody is going to be doing in just a few days at the sold out precon today. So what are translatical task flows and why should you care about them? Well, translatical task flows allow us to be able to extend the functionality of Power BI by using reusable Python code via user data functions at the click of a button in Power BI. The user data function is an artifact in a Microsoft Fabric workspace. We haven't covered it, but we will today. And it utilizes on-demand compute from your capacity. My friend Patrick LeBlanc over at Guy in a Cube, you know who Guy in a Cube is. He did a fantastic video series on creating a Spark DAG dynamically using translatical task flows. Well, we're going to do something different. For years, people have been asking for the capability to write back to the database from a Power BI report. My friend Shabnab Watson has done conference presentations and videos on this subject. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a Fabric SQL database, hashtag FabSQL. We're going to populate it with the sample data, uh, the sales LT AdventureWorks data. And we're going to add some additional tables to be able to track customer product reviews. Then we're going to score those reviews for sentiment. Now, the goal is to let the product owners be able to respond if there's any negative reviews that could indicate a product or process issue. Employees will then use this report to be able to write back to the Fabric SQL database, and any associated notes will then be displayed in the report, as well as their response. All right, enough talking about this. You know what we want to do. Let's go look at this together. I'm starting out in Microsoft Azure because we're going to need a model to be able to score the sentiment. So we're going to my foundry that we used in one of my last videos, and I'm going to go in here, and I want to double check that I've got a model provision. But I'm also going to walk you through how to do it. So I'm going to go to models and endpoints. And you can see I've already got a GPT 4.1 model. I need this and you need this for the tutorial, but I'm going to show you how to deploy one. I'm going to do a deploy model and I'm going to type in exactly what we're looking for, GPT 4.1. I go ahead and I put this into place, select it. I'm going to go ahead and look at this and then I'm going to click confirm. This is also going to prompt us next to be able to look at the deployment type, and this is going to have to do with billing. I'm just leaving this as global standard for the tutorial, so that way this will have everything that I need. I'm going to go ahead and click deploy. Now, here's something to note. In the code we're going to do later, if I use this model, you could see its name is GPT 4.1-2. I would need to change that. But really what I need is I need the target URI, and I need the key. Take these values, put them in a notepad, because we're going to use them in a moment with our code. Now. Part of this is the overall precon. If you've already done module five and all the other modules, you're good, but we're going to start this from scratch. So I'm going to go, I'm going to create a Fabric SQL database. I'm going to call it Fabcon Vienna, exactly what it is. And we're going to provision this. Now, again, if you've already done this, great. But if not, we need our sample data because we're going to rely on some of the tables that we have in our sales LT schema. We double check that we've got our tables provision make this a little bit wider so I've got a little more room. And now let's start with our queries. I'm grabbing these one at a time from the tutorial. Remember, the GitHub is in the description of the video. Go ahead and check that out. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the master key. Now, this is in module five if you haven't uh, created this already. Very simple. I need to create a master key and a database scope credential so we can call our API for our model. And what am I going to use? I'm going to use that name for our foundry to be able to access it. And then I'm going to put in my API key. I'm going to click run and create this database scope credential. If you have any issues calling the model, this is the first place that you're going to want to double check. Now, I'm going to name this because I want to save this and I want to name it exactly what it is. Create master key and database scoped credential. I'm going to go ahead and rename this script and save it. Now let's go ahead and grab our next script. Now, next up, we're actually going to create tables and populate data. We're starting with a product reviews table. We're going to populate it with some data where we're going to score the sentiment on this text. And then also we've got an employees table from AdventureWorks, and I've pulled in names and job titles from AdventureWorks. Uh, you can see we've got employee assigned, and this is going to use a, a CTE to be able to assign employees to products. And then we're going to create product review feedback and a stored procedure to populate product review feedback. We run all of this, and if I go over to DBO, I should be able to see, boom, there we go. My employee assigned, my employees, my product review feedback, my product review table. All of these tables should be in place. 
Now, if you want to go over to the results pane and we can click on the different results that come back to be able to validate the select statements and see that we have our data populated and we've got all our data in place. Now, the next thing I'm going to do from here is I'm going to rename this. Again, what is this? Well, uh, this we're naming it exactly what it was, create tables and sentiment data. Go ahead and click rename. We're going to save this file. Time to do our next one. So going next, what we're going to do is we're going to create the store procedure that actually scores this. Now, this is DBO sentiment for product review. You can see we're calling our GPT model. Now, you're an expert at scoring sentiment. You will examine product name, product description, customer review, and feedback. Remember, the product name and description can provide context to the review. Uh, you will return one of these values, positive, neutral, or negative. We're giving it instructions. So remember, that product description could have important context. Now, there's only two changes we need to make to this script. First, that brackets included the AI endpoint server name. We're just going to replace that again with the URL that we have, uh, just the, the beginning name of it. And then we can go ahead and run this. This will take all of our information, pass it through, and return a score for us. Now, we're going to rename this exactly what it is. Uh, we're going to create our DBO find sentiment for product reviews. Go ahead and rename that. We've got our next script. Now let's go. We've only got one more that we're going to do in this initial setup phase. Now this is actually going to score our sentiment. As a V2, we're going to make this a button in the report. But for right now, we're just going to make this something that we're going to do on demand. It's a cursor. I'm selecting all the reviews where the sentiment is null. We're going to run our two stored procs, find sentiment value, insert review feedback. If we run this real quick, you can just see we get a list of the reviews that we have that are null right now. The sentiment has not been rated. So what we will do is we'll just go ahead and run all of this. We should have some insert rows statements that pop up. Uh, there's going to be about 30 of them unless you've adjusted this demo. And what this will do is this will allow us to be able to validate that we've got our sentiment scored. Before we do that, let's rename, calling this exactly what it is, score sentiment data. Click rename. Now let's go up and let's expand our DBO schema. Let's click on product reviews. And very specifically, what we want to do, boom, a little fabric magic right there, sentiment label. You can see we've got positive, neutral, and negative, exactly what I told the model that I wanted. And it took all of it into account. All right, now that we've got this done, I can also look at my product review feedback table. You can see the employee comments are null. We're going to be populating this via our user data function, via our Power BI report. So what do you got to do? We got to create the user data function. Let's go ahead and call this exactly what it is, SQL right back. And then we're going to click create. Now, when this loads, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select create new function. The next thing is we want to go to manage connections because I need a connection to my SQL database. I'm going to add connection. I'm going to select my Fabric SQL database, go ahead and click connect, and it's going to give us an alias. Copy that alias. We're going to need to save it. Now, after this, I'm going to take the code from the tutorial. I'm going to paste this in place, and then we're going to put that our, our alias right where it says put alias here. Now, this code, you can see we're looking at a character limit, but also what we're doing is we're executing an update statement and we're passing parameters, product ID, review ID, employee ID, and employee comments. Go ahead and publish. This is going to take a little while to publish. I fast forwarded through all that. No reason to sit through it, right? But what we're doing is we're doing an update statement on the updated date and the employee comments. Now, going back over to our tutorial in GitHub, this is where we need our Power BI report, sentiment by product. Now, you'll notice that when I download this, I should have cleared my download files. Uh, I, it says sentiment by product too. Yours should just say sentiment by product. If it says one or two, doesn't matter. It's going to be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. It's going to prompt you to sign in. You're going to want to sign in with your credentials. Your data probably won't load. Mine is cached. Um, and you can see we need to make a change and go to transformation data. Now, this is a parameterized report, and we need server name and database name. So to do that, let's go back over to our Fabric SQL database. We're going to go up to Open In and SQL Server Management Studio. We need the server name and also the database name. Copy both of these out and use our notepad. And then we're going to put them in place for server name, database name, and we're going to click OK. Now, we want to go ahead and make sure one thing is enabled before we click Apply. Come over, and what we're going to do is go to Adoptions and Settings. We're going to go up to Options. We want to make sure that Translytical Task Flows are enabled. So we go to Preview Features, go down to the bottom, Connect to Fabric SQL Databases, Connect to Translytical Task Flows. Both of those need to be checked. 
click OK. And then what we can do is we'll go up and we'll click Apply Changes. This will load our data. This is probably going to prompt you to load in again, So or log in again. So get your Microsoft account. Go ahead and click Sign In. Once it signs you in, go ahead and click Connect. It's going to refresh our data and reload it. You should have a total of 30 reviews, and there should be zero reviews responded to at this point in time. But you can see the breakdown of negative, neutral, and positive. And the next thing we want to do is go to the Employee Product Owners tab because we need to configure our translatical task flow. We're going to right-click on Submit, and we're going to click Format, and we're going to go to Actions. And underneath this, the type is Data Function. We're good to go, but we need to check our workspace. I'm going to change mine to Fabcon Vienna Test 2025 because that's what I named my, my uh, workspace. I'm going to select the SQL Write Back Data Function. I'm going to select Write Employee Info on Product Review. And then it's going to prompt me for my parameters. We're going to do each of these parameters. First, I need to do product ID. So when I do this, I'm going to select all data. And then once I select all data, I'm going to scroll down to the products table. And then I'm going to scroll down from there and I'm going to find product ID because remember, that's the parameter we're looking for. And then the summarization needs to be maximum. We'll cover this in a bit. Review ID, we're going to do the exact same thing, but different table. This time we go to select option, all data. We're going to go to product reviews and then we're going to select our review ID. And once we get our review ID, we're going to select maximum, uh, maximum again, click OK. Now, same thing for employee ID. We're going to select all data. We're going to select employees, and then we're going to select employee ID, and then maximum one more time. Now, the reason this is important, we'll cover in just a second. Employee comments, this is actually going to cover the text area that we have on the page. So we want to select the internal product owner comments. Now we can go ahead and click home. So that way we can save this and then we're going to publish this. Go ahead and click save if you are, if you haven't already save that report, right? And then select our workspace, go ahead and click publish. Got it. Let's go over to Microsoft Fabric. The next thing we need to do is we need to configure the semantic model. We need to make sure that we can authenticate to it properly. So we're going to click on the semantic model that's been published. We're going to click File and then Settings. Under Settings, you're going to see we get this little error, failed to connect. So we're going to edit the credentials. We're going to change this from basic to OAuth, and we're going to change this to none. Again, this is for the demo. Typically, what we'd want is a service principle right here, but that checkbox, so that way the data source authenticates via our intra ID credentials is very important. Okay, so back to our report now. And our data should load and we should have everything that we need. Now, I want to find a review to be able to reply to. So this is in the tutorial. We're going to run this script. Here are my results for the review I'm looking for. Sean Alexander is up at the top. So I'm going to grab Sean's name when I go back to the report. So let's go back over to our report. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the employee product owner, go up to the first name filter, and we're going to filter on Sean. I'm going to go ahead and select all, make it blank, scroll down. Let's get Sean. I can see Sean has two product reviews. Now, this is the one I'm looking for. Add issues from day one, poor customer experience. Now, I'm Sean. I want to write some text in here about what my feedback might be on this. This has been our feedback from our customer from a product review. So let's say uh, this seems like it could be a sales or a customer service or some other type of issue. We really don't know. Uh, we should loop. Well, no. Let's follow up with the customer to be able to see where the problem is if we can get a response and loop in additional teams based off the response. So that way we can figure out who's got the problem and how do we correct this? Now we go ahead and click submit. You can see it starts to spin. And what we're going to find is that this triggers our user data function. This writes back, boom, there's our fabric magic. You can see responded is updated. Responded over here is updated. And also our review is in place. If I come back to the product review sentiment, I can also see that if I click on negative, I can now see the response and I can see the review response as well. Okay, so a little bit of Fabcon for you, a little bit early, especially if you couldn't make it. I know I'm not making it this year, so I hope you're having a great time wherever you are and you get to enjoy this. Sound off. We would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? What are your feedback? Is this helpful? Are you already doing something like this using Power BI and Power Flows? And now you can do this using user data functions and translatical task flows? Would you like to see another video on this? Any questions? Hit us up. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another out there. It's
Bye, everybody. Good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.